This video includes a paid sponsorship from Novium, but I'll talk more about that later. Tesla recently released an impressive new video showing their second generation Optimus humanoid robot autonomously sorting 4680 battery cells, a glimpse into their teleoperation that they use to train its neural net, and the robot walking through an office. Follow along as I provide some commentary on this demo video and share robot expert Jim Fan's reaction to this video as well. I'm John and this is CleanerWatt. Tesla introduced their Optimus project back in August of 2021 with a dancer dressed up in a robot suit. Then in September of 2022, they introduced a rough prototype that was connected and likely supported by a cable above it. A year later in September 2023, Tesla showed off a much more capable and impressive prototype. And then shortly after that, in December of 2023, they released a video of their second generation Optimus robot looking much more finished and refined and with even smoother movement than before. From there, moving into 2024, back in January of this year, Tesla released a video of Optimus folding a shirt. However, Elon did make very clear here that the robot in this video was not able to do this autonomously. Elon wrote on X, quote, important note, Optimus cannot yet do this autonomously, but certainly will be able to do this fully autonomously and in an arbitrary environment won't require a fixed table with box that has only one shirt. So what was actually going on in this video is this is a training environment for Optimus. There was actually in this video an operator to the side of Optimus with a VR headset on and sensors. And as the operator moved their hands in certain motions and actually folded his shirt, basically this was able to control Optimus and train Optimus to be able to fold this shirt. This teleoperation is something that I'll discuss more later on in the video. But in this video, Optimus was not actually folding this shirt autonomously, but rather this was a part of the training environment, training Optimus to do this in the future. On February 24th of this year, Tesla released a video of Optimus walking around a factory unsupported. And when you look at the robot's motion, it's quite fluid and smooth while walking. Now, obviously Optimus still needs quite a bit of refinement and development before it's actually ready for prime time to be able to fully replace a human in a factory or to be able to do a series of helpful tasks um, efficiently in someone's home. But during Tesla's Q2 2023 investors conference call, Elon predicted that Optimus would be able to start doing some useful things in their factories in 2024. Tesla's most recent video update for Optimus seems to confirm that Tesla is indeed working to make this happen. But before I dive into those details and further details, this portion of today's video is sponsored by Novium. If you're looking for a great Mother's Day or Father's Day gift idea, you definitely need to check out Novium hover pens. Beyond the amazingly cool Interstellar Edition hover pen, which I've talked about in the past, Novium also sent me one of their Future Edition hover pens in a two-in-one fountain pen rollerball configuration. As much as I like this Interstellar Edition hover pen, the Future Edition pen is my new favorite, and I really love how the fountain pen writes. With the pen's two-in-one design, you can quickly and easily switch from the fountain pen to the rollerball insert, with the fountain pen head installed, you can either choose to go with the pre-filled ink cartridge that they provide with the set, or you can use the refillable insert and refill it with your own liquid ink if you prefer to use that instead. Like the Interstellar Edition, this Future Edition hover pen has great style, a high-end feel, and it's comfortable to hold while riding. It's also fun to spin as it stands magnetically balanced in its base. This pin is offered in three different colors, including deep black, the frost silver that I have here, and also mist blue. Hover pins do come packaged in a very nice box and would make a great Mother's Day, Father's Day, birthday gift, gift for yourself or anyone on your list. Find out more by clicking the link in the video description and enjoy a 10% discount and free shipping to most countries on all hover pins with code CLEANERWATT. 
So this latest Tesla demo shows Optimus autonomously sorting 4680 battery cells at first in a training environment, and then later on in the video, it shows Optimus actually being tested at one of Tesla's factories, once again, sorting 4680 batteries. Now, when you see Optimus grabbing each 4680 battery individually and dropping that into that red crate, this process doesn't seem very efficient. And I don't believe this is an exact sorting task that happens at the factory handling one cell at a time. And do correct me in the comment section below if you know differently. I wouldn't yet say this is an example of Optimus doing a useful task in the factory just yet, but it does show where Tesla is headed. And I can definitely see Optimus replacing humans in the not too distant future for very repetitive and boring tasks in a factory. With that being said, this video also shares a glimpse into a training environment for Optimus, where Tesla is training Optimus to complete certain tasks. And when it comes to their full self-driving for vehicles, Tesla does use real world driving data to train their neural net for their FSD program. This same level of data, unfortunately though, is not available for a humanoid robot. Obviously, Tesla doesn't have a large fleet of humans walking around with cameras and sensors on them to train the humanoid robot, but they do have a human here in this environment connected with sensors and a VR headset, and they have these humans completing various tasks, and their motion as they complete these tasks controls Optimus, and Optimus mirrors what the operator is doing, and this helps train the neural net for Optimus to be able to complete these same tasks later on autonomously. So unfortunately, training Optimus in this way is very inefficient as compared to the massive amount of data that Tesla can draw from from their connected fleet of vehicles and having to individually train Optimus in this way will take a while. With that being said, since Tesla does have quite a few employees working in their factories, what if Tesla equipped these employees with various sensors so that they could use that data to train Optimus to complete various tasks in the factory while these employees are just doing their everyday work in the factory. That would of course be very interesting and potentially very efficient. And I don't know if Tesla will do this or not, but that's just an idea that I had. But nonetheless, this process overall is going to take some time to train Optimus in this way. However, do note that Optimus doesn't have to be able to do everything to be useful in a factory. Tesla just needs to train Optimus to do one task or two tasks, whatever, very, very well. And once Optimus can do that task very well, it can be useful in a factory without having to do a lot of other functions as well. At the end of the video, Optimus is shown walking around an office and the robot's pace, gait, and motion all the way down to the subtle swinging of the robot's arms is starting to look decently human-like. Now, beyond my commentary on this video, Dr. Jim Fan, who is a senior research manager at NVIDIA and lead of Embodied AI at Gear Lab, recently shared some observations and commentary on this Tesla Optimus demo video on X.com. Jim Fan wrote, quote, congrats to at Tesla Optimus team on another stellar update. The video gives us a peek at their human data collection farm, which I believe is Optimus's biggest lead what does it take to build such a pipeline? Optimus nailed it on all of the following. Optimus hands are among the best five finger dexterous robot hands in the world. It's got tactile sensing, 11 degrees of freedom, compared to many competitors with only six to seven degrees of freedom, and robustness to withstand lots of object interactions without constant maintenance. Interestingly, it looks like Optimus's hands are about to get a lot better because Elon Musk replied to Dr. Jim's post here on X.com and wrote, quote, the new Optimus hand later this year will have 22 degrees of freedom. So essentially with the next generation of Optimus's hands, Tesla is going to double the degrees of freedom, which should give the robot's hands much more dexterity. And its hands are already quite impressive, especially as Dr. Jim pointed out, as compared to some other companies. With Tesla Optimus's hand having 22 degrees of freedom, I believe this might be what Elon Musk was referring to back in December of last year when he posted, quote, so much engineering has gone into the hands. In a year, it will be able to thread a needle. 
When it comes to about 22 degrees of freedom compares to a human hand, according to a quick Google search, and this information comes from Sage Journals, the human hand has 27 degrees of freedom. So with 22, Tesla is getting quite close to the human hand in that regard, at least when it comes to the degrees of freedom. In Jim's post, he went on, quote, teleoperation software. We can see that the human operators are wearing VR goggles and gloves. It is very non-trivial to set up the software to have first-person video streamed in and precise control streamed out while maintaining extremely low latency. Humans are highly sensitive to even the smallest delay between their own motions and the robots. Optimus has a fluid, whole-body controller that enacts the human poses in real time. I think for the average casual observer, it's very easy to overlook something like this in a video and not be impressed with it. But Dr. Jim, who is an expert, is impressed with what Tesla is doing here. So that means we need to take note that this is actually something very impressive that Tesla is doing. Jim's post went on, quote, sizable fleet. You need more than one robot to collect data in parallel, well-trained human contractors taking multiple shifts per day preferably 24-7, and an on-call maintenance crew to make sure that the robots are always busy. That's a ton of operational complexity that academic research labs don't even think of. So even though individually training Optimus in this way is inefficient as compared to the large amount of data that Tesla can draw on while training their FSD neural net, the scale and the operational complexity at which Tesla is operating this training environment is apparently pretty impressive in this space. And Tesla has quite a few Optimus robots they're using in a situation like this. And I believe once again, Optimus will be able to complete very specific tasks very well because Tesla is going to focus on those tasks. And once again, Optimus doesn't have to be able to do everything well to be useful in specific circumstances. Dr. Jim's post goes on, Tasks and environments. It's equally important to figure out what to teleoperate. Currently, most of such efforts are demo driven. Collect data on the tasks that you want to put into a social media video. But solving general purpose robots requires us to think carefully about the distribution of tasks and environments. From 43 to 51 in the video, we can see factory and household settings like moving batteries, handling laundry, sorting daily objects into shelves. Jim's post went on, it's an open-ended research question. If you only have the budget to collect training data for 1,000 tasks, what would you pick to maximize skill transfer and generalization? Lastly, Jim wrote, closing thought, teleoperation is necessary, but insufficient condition to solve humanoid robotics. It fundamentally does not scale. More about this later. So with that being said, based on this closing thought by Dr. Jim, I definitely believe that Tesla needs to start equipping various employees in their factories with sensors and start collecting data on them completing various tasks. And they need to use some of this data to train the neural nets for the Optimus robot program because they once again need a large scale of data to solve a generalized humanoid robot, one that can do a bunch of various tasks in an environment where that environment is constantly changing. But nonetheless, what Tesla has done is extremely impressive and they're making very rapid progress. I would love to know what you think about all this in the comments section below. So please let me know by leaving a comment down below. I'd also like to say once again, thank you to Novium for sponsoring this video. Be sure to click that link in the video description to check out the great hover pins that Novium has to offer that would make a great gift for Father's Day, Mother's Day, a birthday gift, or even a gift for yourself. And if you use the code CLEANERWATT, once again, you can save 10% off of your purchase and get free shipping to most countries. I'd also like to say once again, thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.